Hey there, Darren Steele here. Thank you for being here. And just to remind you that when you freely love who you are, you can freely create the life that you want. And I open with that for this mini course. It's important because, and it, it seems like such a simple statement, but I believe it's really profound. It applies to me. It's my personal and coaching mission that when we don't allow, when we don't accept, when we have conditions that we put upon ourselves, we create our own blocks, we create our own limitations, we create our own restrictions. So when you freely love yourself, you see, it's more than just the love part. It's about the respect for yourself, what you value, what you decide is most important to you. That's all part of the self-love. Then you can freely, and I say it twice, free, for a reason. Freely means without restrictions. And for me, with ease. So let's get into this program, which is titled Four Questions to Determine What You Need to Let Go Of. So I'm going to be looking up a little bit where some of my notes are. And just to recognize, look at my hair. Three and a half months without a haircut. I'm doing pretty good with like some self-grooming during COVID-19 pandemic, it reminds me of a movie. How do I look? Very good. I must say I'm amazed. You were darling to help. I could never have done it without you. All right, now that I've got some of the silliness out of the way, let's, let's get into this here. The purpose of this or these four questions, this little mini course, is to help you get the clarity you need to eliminate distractions and to spend more time doing what you love, doing what you most want to do. So when I say doing what you love, it could be a state of being or it could be action oriented. State of being could be you might most love spending time at your cottage, spending time with somebody that you really care about or love deeply. It could be that you've got a writing project, an artistic project, that you're creating a business or that you have a career or a job, but you love what you do, and there's an aspect in that work that you do that really gives you fulfillment and satisfaction. So how do we get you to, to be able to spend more time, more efficient energy on that project? So I'm going to take you through the steps of this process, and I'm going to share with you just a little bit of my own uh, process, like how I answered the questions for myself, because that's how I came up with this program. So what I'm going to suggest that you do is as you go through the PDF, preferably by hand, write this out by hand if you can, or think about it. Think about the questions. I say by hand because we tend to get more deep into not only our thoughts, but our feelings when we work by hand, as opposed to, you know, quickly typing out what our answers are in a journal and being like, okay, great, I've done this exercise, well, now what? You will just have to take my word for it. You can do some research on the power of writing by hand and how that connects more to uh, a deeper uh, learning experience that has to do with neuroassociations and how we more strongly pattern the things that we are learning. Well, in this case, we're learning something about ourselves. And this is stuff that we already know about ourselves that we're actually uncovering, namely, what are our distractions? How do we feel about those distractions? What do we most value? Why do we value those things? What don't we care that much about? And why don't we care that much about these things? Okay, so part one, what is the work, project, or goal that you want to most accomplish? I don't know what that is, but I'll give you an example for myself. What do I need to let go of and stop doing so that I can slow down enough to fully engage with creating the philosophy and the writing of my book, The Way of Queer Leadership. I'll share a little bit of insight because I think the way I teach is through learning what I'm also teaching. That's the most important thing in the world for me right now. It's middle of May, 2020. Writing this book may take six months or a year. If I don't spend the time working on it, if I don't give myself some deadlines along the way, it'll never get done and I'm going to regret it for the rest of my life. 
even if I get to the end and realize this isn't, this isn't right in some way, I will have learned many things. I will have used much of the content while I was working on it and while I was creating it. Even if I don't get to the intended outcome to publish my book. But it gives me joy. It gives me satisfaction. It also challenges me intellectually, emotionally. Um, there are some other interesting things that go on with that book that are specific to me and how I feel about myself. And I mention that because you might discover what those things are in, in really answering this question. So make sure it's more than just a single line. I only shared a line with you, but I'm sharing some of my insights around why that's important to give you an idea of how you might want to think through answering this question and to what depth or length you want to go in really answering this question. But perhaps to wrap up this, come up with a very clearly defined, specific, final sentence as a form of an answer. So something like, what do I need to do to fully engage and create the philosophy and write my book, The Way of Queer Leadership? That's very clear, right? You know exactly what I'm saying when I say that. The second part is what are all the work projects or tasks that I'm invested in? Now, this could be just about your work. This could be about all the various projects and tasks that you do during the day. Now, let me just make a little interjection here. A project is a combination of many tasks. A task is one thing. Right now, I'm doing a task, which is recording a video. The project is to create this program, the, the four questions to determine what you need to let go of. And the various tasks are, I have to do the video, I have to do a graphic, I have to do an article, I have to do a podcast, I have to... See what I mean? So when I say projects, I wanted to focus first on everything that's my work because I have a number of different things I do that I call my work. And I separately looked at sort of my personal life for this uh, exercise as well. So it might be worth separating that out. So here we go. What are all the work projects or tasks that I'm invested in? For me, I have my publication called Think Queerly on Medium. I have my podcast with the same name, Think Queerly. I have my website, darrensteel.com, that I have to maintain, add articles to, to uh, update information about my coaching programs, and so on. I'm studying something that's called Mind Map Mastery for the next year. It's about neuroscience and how it applies to coaching. And then the reading, the research, and the contem contemplation for me to even write the way of queer leadership, which then extends into the actual sitting down and the writing of my book, The Way of Queer Leadership. And finally, I do some sales for LGBTQ media in Toronto. It's like, Darren, are you type A? Yes. So you can see, this isn't about me here, but I share this because you can see, sometimes we don't realize how many things we're doing. And I'm taking this long pause here. Because this is how I ask the question of myself in, in the, the very first part, is how can I slow down? How can I slow down to focus more time, more energy, more emotional state into writing my book? Each of those things, I've got one, two, I've got six projects that comprise what I do as a business for Darren Steele, okay? Those could be your personal life. Um, let's say you have a dog. So it's taking care of the dog. And let's say you have a partner. So this is the time you spend with your partner. Um, let's say you've got a hobby, like you like sailing. So those are three things in your life. Now, you're probably not going to let go of one of those things unless your relationship isn't working, <laughs> right? Uh, this is why I've focused this on work, because most of us spend a lot of time on our work 
And that's where all of our tasks are. That's where most of our projects are. That's what allows us to create the life that we want so that we could spend time on the boat, so that we could spend time with a dog, so that we could spend more time with the partner. But if you're too distracted and spending too much time at work, maybe you're not spending enough time with your partner and your dog or on your sailboat, right? Okay, so I had six projects. For each one of those projects, I'm going to ask four very specific questions. And I'm going to ask the four questions of each project before I go on to the next project. So here are the four questions. Why is this project important to me? Second one, what don't I like about it? What don't I like about doing this work? However you want to phrase it. Third question, what would, I ha what would happen if I let go of that project? And finally, what would happen if I had more time to focus on that project? And then in brackets, and does that even matter to me? Okay, so let's just use one example from my business life, which is my website, darrensteel.com. I don't want to share some of the other things because there are some more personal things here that you don't need to know about. So if I ask the first question, why is this project? So why is my website darrenstill.com important to me? I wrote, this is my base or central point to send people to so they can learn about me, my courses, my coaching, etc. If I expand a little bit more on that, the idea is that if somebody goes to my podcast or to my publication on Medium, I'm hoping that they'll come back to my website to learn more about who is Darren, that's in my about page, how I coach, and a whole bunch of other things that are only available on my website. So the next question, what don't I like about my website, darrensteel.com, as a work project? So this was a couple months ago or six weeks ago. I don't care for the theme and the lack of images that don't show sort of the branding or the feel of what I want darrensteel.com to be. I would really like to have someone else manage it and help me understand how to make my website be the place to convert potential clients into actual coaching clients. Okay, so that is a very insightful answer for me to get some understanding about uh, what that website um, what's wrong for me with the work around that website. So some of the work is that I feel kind of tired having to do the work or that I have questions about, well, how do I do this? I don't know how to do this. Maybe I should hire someone to do this work for me. And then what would happen if I let it go? So if I let go of my website, I'd be giving up my coaching career and I'd be giving up the central place to share my ideas. So I've really answered right there that I can't let go of this. I've, I've put in, you can feel an emotion there, but why that's important to me. That's the purpose here of this exercise. And then the final question, what would happen if I had more time to focus on it? If I had more time to focus on darrenstill.com, I could address the issues in the second point. I was talking about that I didn't like the theme or the lack of images. Namely, I'd be able to create a site that I love, that I can share my message on that, and that it communicates better who I am, who's my ideal client. It'll help the reader understand how I work and if we might be a good fit for coaching, and it would help me to generate more clients. So just a little update here. After I did that exercise, I went and did some more research on different themes. And a theme for a website is just the wallpaper, the aesthetic, how it looks. And I found something really quite affordable that was in the range that I wanted to spend. I did it myself and I am so much happier with the look. I redid the copy on a couple of pages. I brought some things up to date because we're human beings. We grow and we evolve. And uh, I felt like some of what I was saying on the website wasn't representative anymore of the person that I'm constantly becoming. So. I did this then for each of the different aspects of my business and I also got very clear on uh, a couple of areas that I needed to let go of. There, there, there weren't any particular projects that I needed to completely let go of but I did identify one that I might let go of and how I framed the final answers around that one is I looked at some things I can stop doing with it and some ways that I can create some more distance while let it while allowing it to still exist, right? So 
The final part of this exercise is what sort of boundary will you establish to uphold what's most important to you? This might be a simple answer, as simple as deciding in your calendar uh, when you're going to do something. That could be uh, at a particular time in your day, whether that's a weekly, a bi-weekly, or a monthly event. Um, for myself, I had to look at my calendar, and since I work from home and I'm an entrepreneur, I had to look at my blocks of time and how frequent those blocks would uh, show up in the week at what time of the day because I do certain work. Um, I prefer to do certain work at certain times of the day, like my reading and contemplation and writing first thing in the morning uh, when I have the least amount of distractions. And that goes back to my original, what's most important to me, writing my book. So if I have the least amount of distractions, I have the clearest mind, I have the strongest intentionality, the emotional investment and output around what's most important to me, I make that my priority to do that first thing in the day. All right? And that's basically it. Uh, there were some other boundary issues for myself around simply picking up the phone or answering text messages too quickly around some client engagement. And uh, if you've listened to the podcast, I talk a little bit more at length about that just to conclude this video training. We need to be transparent. Uh, if we're going to commit to what's most important to us, what we value the most, and if we're going to put our time and energy into what, what makes us most happy, what brings us the most meaning in our lives. The establishing of the boundaries may require that we tell other people what those boundaries are. That maybe you're only available to answer emails or texts or phone calls between the hours of this time and that time. Or that you're unavailable on certain days. Or that you use your out-of-the-office email signature for the times that you're focused on certain things. Or perhaps you let people know that you're taking a 12-hour uh, digital fast where you're turning off all of your electronic devices so that you can spend time with the person that you care about the most. It doesn't matter what it is. It only matters why it's important to you and that you choose to put the attention on that thing that's most important to you and you add to it the intention and the intention is how you feel. Think of all the good emotions, the positive, uplifting and joyful emotions that you get out of spending time doing that thing that's most meaningful to you and then repeat. The repetition of putting your attention and intention, your emotions, your positive emotions into that thing that gives you the most meaning will make it more meaningful, will improve your well-being, will give you more joy and more satisfaction. And when we feel that way, it's amazing how the things that bother us don't bother us as much. And I think it's simply because when we're feeling good about ourselves, that means like I said at the beginning, we're loving ourselves. We are taking care of ourselves, freely taking care of ourselves. And thus, we can freely create the life we want. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck and have fun doing this exercise.